Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. This is part two of the fuselage build episode. There probably will be a part three. I'm filming this intro at the very end. Spoiler alert, but you can see where I'm ending off the episode. But it's been crazy. I've been back to work, working a ton, had COVID, got married, but I'm kind of settling back in and I have a New Year's resolution to just get more videos out there. I want it to not feel like a burden, I want it to feel like fun again. I'm getting closer on the build, I'm getting my engine here in about two months. I've got all my avionics in. I'm doing a full Garmin G3X Touch with autopilot and GNX 375 navigator and also a battery backup. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is fuselage part two, enjoy. I do not like the fact that there are ferrous nut plates in this magnetometer mount. Drilling out the rivets, replace those nut plates with just some stainless steel hardware. Turns out the GMU 11 installation kit comes with hardware to mount it. The thing that I'm just thinking about now is how come a lot of people are mounting the trim wire through the bulkhead, they're drilling extra holes through the bulkhead as well as the magnetometer uh, harness through the bulkhead. And I'm guessing it's to keep it up off the floor, but i am got some mold right here. That should work perfectly. Oh, we disconnected the tail cone from the cage, obviously. Flipped it over because these tail wheel steering cable exit fairings we need to test fit those. Don't do that with one hand. There you go. Fits just fine at uh, 3 16 You drill the holes as marked on these and... See what I mean? So at least they're consistently off. I'll just JB weld or epoxy a washer in there. It'll be fine. Okay, I mixed up a little JB weld to get the washer in there. Twelver is going to be too long, so let me switch to the sixer. I've pinched myself more times than I can count on this thing, so be careful as you're tightening it up. That's a threat. Much more better. Oh yeah. Okay, I flipped it back over. Started locating the nut plates for the end of the tail wheel steering cable exit fairing. So I'm gonna start drilling with the long size 40. Can't emphasize enough how much these are good. I got to thinking and reading ahead in the instructions, hey, where does it tell us to drill out that hole or these holes for the tail wheel mount? And the answer is nowhere. <laughs> so I figure while I've got access and can drill this way rather than hunting around and trying to find it from the bottom with tail skins already mounted so that we're not caught off guard later on. So I figured um, we could just start out small to keep it straight down there, especially on these guys. These are just um, 316. We'll get the hole started this way and then we'll kind of match drill on the um, bottom side because there's no way to get a standard jobber length drill um, down there and relatively straight, I don't believe. Maybe here, because there's this big opening. Okay, number 28, 5 sixteenths, and then 33, 3 sixteenths. So we're gonna step it up slowly, first with the quarter. Now 5 sixteenths. Okay, now for 3 sixteenths. Oh, I gotta put in one more, uh, four more rivets. One, two, three, four, and I can mount the pulleys. So I think that's what I'll do tonight, and then get the get this back on the table tomorrow. I am just now embarking on kind of one of the more annoying tasks from what I've seen from the other builders that uh, are YouTube. But again, another shout out to S21 Project P20 uh, P2 Arrow. Uh, all you guys are giving awesome, awesome hints. I have patience for like tying flies, fly fishing. I think avionics is gonna be good for me, but fitting, pulling something out and re-trimming, i.e. the station four closeout right here. Um, 
I'm just gonna have to kind of take my time because I know it's not gonna be one of the things that I love most. Say mark an eighth inch around the top and bottom. There is a little bit of a cut mark right there. I'm not sure if you can see that. S21 Project, Tony, he uh, cautions us about this corner right here. So I'm leaving ample room right here. All right, after about mm, six, I'd say, trial fits, we got it looking pretty good. Now trace that so that it slides inside the skins. These went pretty darn smooth. It just took a really long time to file down the edges right there. But the bend went smoothly, no cracking. I filleted it, filleted it, filleted it bent it around something with a, a fairly wide radius, which was a two by four. The, the soft edge of a two by four was about perfect. The reason why I'm bringing it up now is because I need to put it in place so that I can trim up this guy. I take two hands. I also matched the welding right there. Installs and removals looks pretty good. Not perfect, but uh... okay. Slid the top stringers back in in preparation to start working on the top forward front skins right here. There's the window cut out. Got them weighted down because so I got to put a curve with the edge forming tool. Make double damn sure you're doing it the correct direction. Funny story on one of the wing skins, I did it the wrong way. Luckily, that was the first. Um, bottom, I think it was a left bottom wing skin I did. <laughs> so that suddenly became the right bottom wing skin. But I always have to do it about two or three times. And it's almost imperceptible, the, the curve you're putting it. So you do this on the wing top and bottom skin. You also do it on the top skin of the tail cone where it overlaps the longeron right there. As well as you might be able to see a little bit better on this. Once it rivets, it'll have a nice little bit of pressure pushing down on the other side. So this is the right window. Kind of see the uh, edge form, what that does right there. Before I get too much further, I got to get the windows in. Ace Hardware had a size 27. Not even Home Depot or Lowe's have numbered sets, so that was awesome. You know, most everything in here is a size 30 on this airplane. So 27 is slightly larger, it's 0.1440 of an inch, size 30 is 0.1285. So you are you do that because this is a Lexan, a soft material, so when you pull the rivet, it's going to, a size 30 rivet, it's going to expand, um, and I guess you don't want to warp the, the window. So what could you do instead of size 27, you know it's pretty darn close, it's a 964, so that's 0 0.1406. 5 30 seconds is quite a bit bigger, so... Um, if you don't have a size 27, number 27, I think the 964 would go pretty well. You know, I can see having ah, a size 27 drill bit hanging around unmarked as a bit of a threat because it's so close to a size 30 and size 30 is a very common hole. So um, I'm going to take some tape and just mark this off as a, as a size 27. Zeros with this window support angle, I drew a line down the middle of it so I could line it up and have it be centered. Number two is I want to drill a hole through the a hole. I'm an -o 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 through the uh, top gusset, put a Clico in there to prevent it from sliding around. Number three is I want to put some pressure, i.e., a clamp right here to keep some tension on it to prevent the pillowing. Something I did a little bit out of order is I didn't 
drill and Coleco and rivet the aft section of the window support angle as of yet. The directions had you do it a while ago, and that is to be able to line up that black line back here as well as up here. And by the way, if you go to rands.com instructional videos, Edmund Gill, Eddie Gill, he's got a bunch of good videos, about four for just this portion. Okay, something else I should probably point out is I still have Clicos from the middle gusset into the Longeron, which will interfere towards the end um, of drilling down here. But that's not relevant right now because we're just doing the window support angle up here. So you don't, I don't think you want to remove these right now because that's kind of keeping the structure all together and aligned, right? So. Um, and if they were pointing out this direction, there'd be too much interference. All right, let's get to drilling these out, match drilling. It's a little bit oblong. So that's either an indication of a dull bit or something else going on. So I'm gonna switch to a size 40 for the rest and then come back and upsize it and switch to new bits. This is left intentionally a little bit long. So we've got to shear that off. Old hole drilled with 30. New hole drilled with 40 and then final sized. Old hole, oblong. New hole, nice. Good hole. Using string to Get the line of the stringer. Extrude that line all the way to station three at the top there, and then we'll cut it so that this line is straight. Let me just update you on what I've been up to in the last couple weeks that I haven't been filming and haven't been working a lot. So you haven't been missing very much. Getting these holes kind of lined up, located, drilled, and final sized as well as final sizing the spine. I just did that right now. Now I'm ready to kind of take everything off, clean off these skins, but I've got a couple of reminders for myself of things to do. I've got to drill a couple holes in the window support bracket and rivet those in. I've got to get my antenna mounts and doublers in and um, ensure to put some powder pins in the pulleys. I've made some templates that I've got to take to the local EAA to break and shear out of a bunch of stock that I've got. And I've got a lot of other cool videos coming uh, down the pike. I mentioned the avionics video. I went out and you probably have seen the best tugs video. I'm gonna review that, do a full review on that guy. I've also got another video where I've set up Apple HomeKit to have Siri turn on my Bonanza engine heater out in my hangar 20 minutes away, which is awesome because it's been chilly. Single digits, I've been wanting to fly. So that's enabled that. That wraps it up. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Till then, you're clear to wreck.